Howdy folks, hope you're all enjoying your weekend and welcome to the far, far future. Yes, that's right, it's time for the annual War Thunder video. That joke's going to get old before even I do. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it still has some legs in it yet. We'll see. This is Dark Beluga Master in the world-famous Korean War Vintage F86 Sabre. It's War Thunder Realistic Battle. And of course, you know what that means. Somebody always has to crash on takeoff. There goes one of his teammates. Don't worry. Somebody on the enemy team is going to crash on takeoff as well. I, I can't help but wonder how people manage to crash on takeoff. I mean, you can set the throttle to 100%, sit back, put your hands behind your head, and the aircraft will take off itself. And yet somehow, and somebody on the enemy team has managed to crash on takeoff already as well but it just seems to be a thing it's it's traditional war thunder realistic battle you're not playing a proper war thunder air realistic battle unless at least one person manages to decorate the runway or the side of the runway with another crater it's just it's a thing well anyway what you are not going to be seeing today is dark beluga master running up a cricket score of air to air victories it's not that he's not going to shoot any aircraft down, he is, but, well, he's not going to be shooting down half of the enemy team single-handed. But if you think that means it's going to be a boring battle to watch, well, I hope you enjoy being wrong, because this is definitely going to be full of twists and turns, with a particularly massive plot twist towards the end. Now, of course, I'm fully aware that, having said that right at the start of the battle, many of you are already thinking, oh, he's going to win it with a manoeuvre kill at the end. Well, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, w I will say something. Um, let's just say that I am reasonably confident that this battle is going to end in a way that most, if not all of you, are probably not actually expecting. And we'll say no more on that subject until the end of the battle. So, Air Realistic Battle, F-86 Sabre. It's normally at this point where I start going into the history of the aircraft, but I've kind of covered the F-86 Sabre before. Suffice to say that while the F-86's main opponent, the Soviet MiG-15, could fly higher, climb faster, and turned sharper than the Sabre, the Sabre could dive faster, it was more stable aerodynamically, and it had a big advantage with a radar gun sight. Other than that, the two aircraft were actually very, very closely matched. Which was a big surprise for the Americans, because they were accustomed to having technologically superior aircraft over their opponents, and with the exception of the Sabre's radar-assisted gun sight, that really wasn't the case when it came to fighting the MiG-15. One other advantage that the American pilots expected to have over their communist opponents in Korea was extensive air-to-air -air combat experience from World War II, which obviously the Americans had, and the Chinese didn't. But the Russian <coughs> advisers who also flew MiG-15s, did have extensive World War II air combat experience. And that also, completely unofficially, but very obviously, also helped to level the playing field. At this stage of the battle, it's going to be really hard for me to deliver a coherent narrative because things start happening very, very quickly indeed. There's just a massive furball of a dogfight going on down here at extremely low level. Dark Beluga Master is going to be constantly switching targets and rarely staying on one target for more than a couple of seconds before checking behind him to make sure nobody else is doing the same thing to him and breaking to avoid while simultaneously scanning the air for the next best target to go for. It's um, It can get quite confusing. <laughs> there was a swift behind him, but he was also engaged with another friendly. Big 17 up above. Checks behind him, actually, maybe not such a good idea. MiG-17 down there. Lost quite a bit of speed as he climbed and rolled over. MiG-17's managed to get away. There's an F-5 up ahead, which is basically a Chinese copy of the MiG-17. It's burst out. Uh, he hit something, but it wasn't enough to shoot him down. Plenty of other people have been shot down. Eight pilots so far, although two of those crashed on takeoff. Um, so this and then the guy goes another one. F5 up above. Oh, that's a lot of ammunition expended for no real result. No hits on the F5. I'm trying to follow him around. The F5's already piling the speed on. 
friendly MiG-17 turning inside him. He's going to have a high angle deflection shot here. Nope, nothing. Didn't get him. Enemy coming in from ahead. Yep, they both managed to miss each other. Swings it around. Somebody on his tail. Enemy F-86 up ahead. And just down below slightly. Does he have the speed to catch him? He's sort of in range. He's probably going to have a shot. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, yep. Yeah, a hit. He's got him. Right. It cost him a lot of ammunition, though, and there is an F5 who was on his tail and then appears to have thought better of it. One of the very welcome things about the F-86 in War Thunder is that because it's armed with uh, 50 caliber machine guns rather than the cannon ammunition that you typically find on, well, pretty much everything else, um, you can afford to hose the guns around a bit because it does carry a lot of ammunition. And Dark Beluga Master here certainly is not shy, as we're about to see again <laughs> when it comes to holding down the trigger. And having that large ammunition capacity is going to come in extremely useful on a number of occasions in this battle too. Oh, enemy Supermarine Swift up ahead. Yeah... I realise that it's kind of traditional for me to go on about how good British aircraft were. And a lot of them were, but where the Supermarine Swift is concerned, I just... Nope, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because that aircraft was terrible. Um, it did have the world airspeed record at one point, but just about every time a new jet aircraft was introduced in the 1950s, it quickly gained the world airspeed record. The Swift was fast, and that was about all it had going for it. It was plagued with problems, suffered numerous crashes, a lot of them fatal. By the time they got to the Mark 7 version of the Swift, they had ironed out most of its problems, but, well, it took them seven versions of the aircraft to make it not fatal to fly. And at that point, the damage had been done. The aircraft's reputation had been irretrievably tarnished and production was cancelled in favour of the much, much better and far more reliable Hawker Hunter. Ironically, the Hawker Hunter was indirectly responsible for some of the catastrophic design failures in the Supermarine Swift. While the first version of the Swift, the F-1, was in production, they decided that they wanted to adopt the Hawker Hunter's armament of four fuselage-mounted 30mm Aden cannon. But the modifications that they had to make to the Swift's airframe to fit the ammunition meant that they had to move the wings forward on the fuselage. The problem was that this could often cause the Swift to suddenly, and for no apparently good reason, to enter a sudden pitch-up attitude, which would basically, mid-flight, flip the aircraft onto its back. Those few pilots who survived the experience tended to be quite upset about it. Obviously, Supermarine tried to fix this problem, but without a huge amount of success until they got to the Mark IV version of the Swift. That's right, the Mark III version was still plagued with this and many other problems so much so that it was never actually accepted into service by the Royal Air Force. By the time they got to the Mark IV, they eventually settled on the solution of adding ballast weight to the nose of the aircraft. Yes, they fixed the problem of the nose suddenly pitching up by adding a load of dead weight to the nose. If you feel like slow clapping, now would be an appropriate moment. Ooh, head on past there with another F5. Uh, and he did take some damage, but yeah, not critical. I managed to score some hits in return, but no shoot down. Um, he's one of only two players left on his team at this point, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was quick, I know. Technically, the two of them are fighting against four enemies, but the two F5s are nowhere to be seen. And the Swift F7 is out of ammunition, and he's RTB. So this is actually good, because even though they're outnumbered two to one, locally, they have the two to one advantage over the uh, J35 up there. So the two of them are going to want to knock that J-35 out of the air as quickly as they can to reduce the odds against them. And the J-35 is obviously going to want to string this out for as long as he possibly can until his teammates can come to his assistance. What just happened to the other F-86? said he crashed. There, there's a combat message. Hellfire 7775 has crashed. No, he didn't. He just saw... Wait. I think he must have tried to pull a high-G manoeuvre when his airframe had already taken damage from an earlier dogfight and, um, well, basically just fallen apart in midair. So that's a bit of a blow to morale. Dark Beluga Master is now alone 
against four enemies. So it's obviously in his best interests to nail this J32B, which, by the way, was the fighter variant of the Saab 32 Lanson. Yep, I probably should have mentioned there's a new patch out for War Thunder. Uh, Swedish tanks and aircraft are now available, that being one of them. But the sooner you can shoot this guy down, to turn it into a one versus three <laughs> battle, which doesn't sound too good when I say it out loud like that, but it's better than a one versus four. And apart from anything else, I mean, at the moment, they're fighting right over the top of his airbase. His airframe has taken damage. He's going to be low on ammunition. I mean, the F-86 is 50 caliber machine guns do carry a lot of ammunition, but they don't carry that much. So he can't even land with the J-32 circling above him. And he's going to need to land to get some repairs and some fresh ammunition uh, before the J-32's three teammates join him. Speaking of his three teammates, if you take a look at the combat messages, you'll see that the enemy Swift F-7 has crashed. That's kind of true and it kind of isn't. If you take a look at the enemy team list on the top right corner of the screen, you'll see that he's still very much in play. So what's happened is he's crashed on the runway. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have ourselves as our first confirmed Jingles landing of 2020. No, we didn't get to witness it personally, but I'm going to take it anyway. Hang on, where did that J-32 go? We've lost sight of him. It's possible that he was low on fuel, or maybe he just didn't fancy his chances against the airfield defences. Either way, it looks like Dark Beluga Master is in with a shot at pulling off a landing. He's deployed the air brakes, he's lining up. He's definitely going for it, still no sight of any enemy aircraft. If you're going to do it, now would definitely be the time. Thanks to the... Uh, teammate who crashed on takeoff. You can see the pillar of smoke over there, <laughs> providing a, a handy airfield marker. Here we go. Oh, I don't know. Those uh, hills at the foot of the airfield mean that he's having to come in pretty high, and in fact, I think too high. Yeah, yeah, he's called it off. He's going to have to go around again. The question, of course, is are the enemy team going to give him the time that will be required to not just go around again and execute a landing, but also to repair and rearm? And he had a quick look around, and I, I actually think, yep, there is an F5. There he is. So the answer to that one would be not today, Sunshine. Now, is it just the one F5? The one F5 isn't that bad. I mean, He's caught him while he was low and slow, so that's not good. But it could be a lot worse, because there's another F5, and it looks like the Swift has just repaired, so he's going to be getting into the air as well. And then, of course, there's the J32B. But for the moment, it's just him and the one F5. So how's he going to handle this? Because he's got the same problem now that he had earlier. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean... It's a one-on-four, -on -four, but locally, for the moment, it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. So you're going to want to kill that F5 as quickly as you possibly can. But right now, that F5 holds all the cards. He's got an undamaged, fully armed aircraft, and he has the height and speed advantage. And I've pulled open the battle chat window. If you have a look down there in the bottom left corner of the screen, Dark Beluga Master is saying, you know, if you let me land, I'll give you a good fight. <laughs> um... You can try, I suppose, <laughs> but they're under no obligations to let you get away with it. The enemy Swift player has actually said, yeah, well, why not? It seems only fair, but of course the F5 is under no obligation whatsoever to let him get away with it. I think at the moment, he, he knows the F5 isn't going to let him do it, and he's trying to sucker him into coming down and getting shot down by those anti-aircraft guns. We just heard the defences opening up, but so far, no luck. And of course, unless he gets lucky, and those AA defences do shoot one of them down, the longer he's stooging around at low altitude like this, waiting for it to happen, the worse the odds are going to get. And in fact, they just did. Because a second F5 has just shown up. However, Lady Luck has just thrown him a bone. Because while he has his hands full with a pair of F5s, and the Swift is on his way, the J-32 
has actually crashed. It's not much of a consolation because he is still engaged with two F5s who both have the height and speed advantage over him. But, well, one less aircraft to worry about is... it's certainly something. It's definitely not nothing. But having your hands full with a pair of essentially Chinese MiG-17 copies is more than enough of a problem to be going on with for the moment. Even with the assistance provided by the airfield's AA defences. Oh shit, that was far too close. It looks like he did get his tail clipped. He's looking to try to get a burst of return fire in as the uh, F5 overshoots, but the second one's coming in. He's constantly on the defensive, and he's unable to build up a decent head of speed because he's constantly having to pull evasive manoeuvres. Looks like he got his tail clipped. Although, hang on a second, one of those F5s is trailing smoke. Looks like the airbase defences have actually inflicted some damage. And I'm sure he'd love to close in and follow up on that, but... Oh, and here comes the Swift as well. He's constantly having to react defensively, which is denied him the opportunity... Oh, hang on a second, this F5's coming in. Okay, it's going to be a high-angle deflection shot. But that's exactly where the computerised gun sight of the real F-86 Sabre would have proven its worth, although he did actually miss. It was close. Oh, he's got the opportunity here. He's done it! He's done it! He shot down one of the F5s. Oh, that's great news. So now he's only... <laughs> now he's only outnumbered two against one. He does still have help from the airbase defences, however. But he can't have a lot of ammunition left. And constantly pulling all of these defensive manoeuvres is denying Dark Beluga Master the speed that he needs to do anything aggressive. Although, hang on a second. The surviving F5 has bugged out. He has ammunition. Maybe he took some damage from the airfield defences, and it looks like the Swift is bugging out as well. Well, that was unexpected. Are they actually giving him the opportunity to land and repair and rearm? Because he must be desperately low on ammunition by now. It looks like he's definitely going to give it a try, because he's deployed the air brakes, and he's lining up for final approach. Unfortunately for Dark Beluga Master, you know, as if he didn't have enough problems, this is where aerodynamics and air drag, in particular, are going to kick him squarely in the balls. <laughs> because he's too fast. And all three of his landing gear wheels have just been ripped off. So is he going to risk a belly landing? He is not going to risk a belly landing. And that was a very wise choice, because he might survive crashing on the airfield, but he wouldn't survive the weight that it was going to take for a crashed aircraft on the airstrip to be repaired and rearmed. The second the enemy saw, and the Swift is lurking overhead, just waiting to pounce on him, even if he'd managed to pull off a successful landing, but the two surviving enemy players would have seen the combat message that he'd crashed, and since the battle would have continued, they would have known that he'd crashed on the runway, because otherwise the match would have been over and they would have won, and they would have picked him off easily. Now you might think, rightfully so, that Dark Beluga Master was right up shit creek without a paddle. However, he does have a couple of things in his favour. First, the Swift has actually been hit, as you can see, he's trying smoke and coolant, so he has taken a couple of hits from the airfield defences. And while Dark Beluga Master is extremely low on speed, so is the Swift. And so what you're watching now is something that they call stall fighting. Both aircraft have stalled, both aircraft are now struggling to regain aerodynamic stability and build up some speed. And it's going to be a question of who recovers best from the stall. And it looks like they both... They've both pretty much pulled it off. What you're going to see now are both aircraft engaging in a classic air combat manoeuvre called the Rolling Scissors. Each one of them is trying to cut inside the turn of the other, causing the other to overshoot. And the trick here is to maintain just enough airspeed to not stall. Oh, that was close. And the Swift has abandoned the scissors, which has allowed Dark Beluga Master to get in beside him, square in the gun sights, and the Swift is down. And that just leaves the other F5. But Dark Beluga Master has taken a lot of damage, and he is critically low on ammunition. He actually only has 88 rounds of 50 caliber ammunition left, and that's for all six of his machine guns. That's not 
88 rounds per gun. That's 88 in total. And while I'm sure he's itching to attempt a belly landing so he can get more ammunition and have the damage to his aircraft repaired, a belly landing under these circumstances is probably going to be fatal. Even if he survives the crash, as we mentioned earlier, the enemy F5 will see the battle message telling him that Dark Beluga Master has crashed. And as long as the battle doesn't instantly end, that can only mean that he's crashed on the runway and he's waiting for repairs. And with the amount of damage that he's taken, what well, we saw earlier with the Swift, who also crashed on the enemy runway and took an awful long time to get back in the air. So tempting though it may be to attempt a belly landing and go for those repairs, it would be suicidal. So at this point, Dark Beluga Master is pretty much resigned to having to track down and kill the surviving F5 with 88 rounds of ammunition and an extremely badly beaten up aircraft. While he's doing that, let, let's talk some more about the Supermarine Swift, because it amuses me, <laughs> and there was one in this battle. How far did we get? We were talking about the F2, which, thanks to the wings being moved forward to fit the 30mm Aiden cannon ammunition, developed an alarming tendency to suddenly pitch up the nose and flip onto its back in mid-flight, which was, you know, obviously not something that you wanted in an aircraft. Uh, the F3 version of the Swift was the first version of the Swift to have afterburners. Unfortunately, it failed all of its trials and was never accepted into Royal Air Force service. The F4 version of the Swift did fix the pitch-up problem by sticking a bunch of weight in the nose. <laughs> Just dead weight. This didn't do a lot for the aircraft's flight characteristics, but it did at least come with a working afterburner. Unfortunately, when I say a working afterburner, I mean an afterburner that only actually worked at low altitude, which considering that the aircraft was supposed to be a high altitude interceptor... <laughs> less than ideal. And in fact it needed the afterburner to even stay in straight and level flight at high altitude, so the F4 version was another resounding disaster. The F5 version of the Swift was actually pretty good. It was an unarmed photo reconnaissance version. In fact, it won the NATO Royal Flush photo reconnaissance competition, even beaten off opposition, including the American RF-84 Thunderflash. Fortunately, it was an unarmed photo reconnaissance version. Not much use as a high altitude interceptor. Oh, hello, there's the other F5. Is he going to get him? No, he's not going to get him in the head-on pass. The F5 isn't going to fall for that old gag. Well, that was kind of unfortunate. And remember, he only has 88 rounds of ammunition, so he's not going to be spraying and praying and hosing around like he was earlier in this battle. He's going to have to make those shots count. The Swift F6 was never built, again because of problems with the afterburner at high altitude. 14 F7s were built. Oh, no. Oh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is he going to be able to catch up? Oh, I don't know. It's kind of risky at this range. The F5 is definitely trying to... Well, he probably has the speed. But he is managing to close the distance on him. Although he's going to want to make absolutely sure of the shot. At those kind of angles, he is not absolutely sure of the shot. Maybe now? Does he have enough lead? Come on. Oh, crap. He missed. No, 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 no. He's still in an advantageous firing position. Come on. Come on, get the nose in. Oh, the F5. No, he's... That's it, he's done. He's out of ammo. He's got nothing. He's also approaching bingo fuel, by the way. <laughs> so, no ammunition. Damaged airframe. Perilously close to the enemy anti-aircraft defences. And doesn't really have enough fuel to be messing around with the afterburner. And the F5 is now on his tail. This is the kind of situation that I believe air combat manoeuvre experts refer to as proper fucked. Pretty much the only way he can get a kill here is by trying to force that F5 to crash. Something that we have seen before here on the channel and something that's referred to as a manoeuvre kill. He's using the air brakes to try to get this guy to over shoot or do something stupid in an effort to stay on his tail oh 
but the cards are all in the hands of the F5. Dark Beluga Master literally has nothing. He barely has a flyable airframe, he's got no ammunition, and his engine's running on fumes. His only chance is to force that F5 to crash, to make him do something stupid and overcommit at low altitude. And I'm pretty sure that the majority of you who started making predictions at the start of this video were predicting exactly that, that we would finish off with a manoeuvre kill. Well, like I said at the beginning, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> but I still think you're likely to be surprised by what happens at the end of this battle. Ah, still, you wouldn't want to be in his shoes, would you? I mean, that F5 is square on his tail. Oh, wait, has he made him overshoot? Not that he can do anything about it, even if he does make him overshoot. He doesn't have any ammunition. You can only hope that the F5, at low altitude, tries to do something radical uh, in the fear of finding the F-86 on his tail in a position to shoot him down. I mean, the F-5 doesn't know that he's out of ammunition, although he, he may be quickly coming to that conclusion. Dark Beluga Master is doing absolutely everything inside his power to both stay alive and try to make that F-5 overcommit. But it looks like we're in another rolling scissors, and yeah. At this point, the F5 must know that he's out of ammo. I mean, he had him square in his gun sights there, only for a fraction of a second, but he never even tried to pull the trigger. So, at this point, I'm pretty confident that the F5 knows Dark Beluga Master is completely helpless. So now all the F5 has to do is take his time, line up his shot, and make sure of the kill. Oh, hang on a minute. Friendly ground units up ahead. Is this the plot twist we were waiting for? Is the F5 going to get shot down by friendly ground units? Uh, no, he isn't. The truth is far funnier than that. The F5 does still have ammunition, and he's concentrating so hard on lining up the shot, he forgets about his airspeed. And yeah, that just happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when both teams run out of aircraft, both teams suddenly start losing points. And that, in fact, is an epic throw from the F5 because Dark Beluga Master's team were ahead on points at the moment when the collision occurred. So the enemy team run out of points first, and even though both teams have no aircraft, Dark Beluga Master's team wins. So that was the plot twist we advertised nearly half an hour ago, and one which I'm reasonably confident most of you didn't actually see coming. Dark Beluga Master, well done. I don't think I've ever seen anybody win a game of War Thunder that way. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're all having a great weekend, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.